Ladies and gentlemen, up next, we have a tech talk entitled The Age of Autonomous Materials Innovation, presented by Joseph Krauss, co-founder and CEO of Radical AI. Hello, everyone. Great to be with you here today. My name is Joseph Krauss, and I am the co-founder and CEO of Radical AI. And Radical AI is a company that is building the future of scientific discovery with AI and automation at the center. And the place that we start is in material science. When we are thinking about applications of using artificial intelligence and in the scientific realm, where we wanted to use them today, materials were the first thing that we thought about. Because materials are in everything. Regardless of what industry you care about, automotive and aerospace, manufacturing and defense, energy, climate, semiconductors, the most important industries in the world are all a direct result from materials R&D. But the problem with these industries, and materials research specifically, is the incredibly long timelines to novel discovery and the incredible cost it takes to really push something from that discovery into commercialization. And what I'm going to demo for all of you today is something that we at the company call System One. It is our first version of replicating the scientific process. But rather than driving that scientific process by a human, which we do today, we drive that process entirely by AI and autonomy. And when we think about the scientific process, we think about how we as scientists do that process today. We will research a new industry. We will get smart inside that industry, reading publications and patents. We formulate new hypotheses around different things that we're going to go create. We actually do simulations in the materials world to generate and start to predict the properties of these materials. And then we actually take those materials and we send them into a lab. And at Radical AI, that's exactly the company that we're building. We use an AI engine to predict and generate millions of novel materials. And then we send those materials into a fully autonomous robotic lab that can not only synthesize, but also characterize and test what those materials are. And for the purpose of today, I'm going to show you the first part of that process. And what we are building in which we call an entirely new kind of scientific discovery. And so let's get started. As I mentioned inside the scientific process, the first place that we typically look for is reading publications. And these, when more scientists are working on new experiments today, will use agents to entirely index a scientific field and adopt all of the research that has been passed, conducted inside. It will not only read those publications, it'll start to draw information out of those publications. And using that, we can actually move into predicting novel structures. Now, the big things when you read publications that you're really looking for are what space do I want to work in? And what are the properties or the materials that I actually want to go after? And our AI engine that we built today will not only index and come up with new structures, ones that we have never seen before, but it will then start to simulate the properties in real time that those millions of structures are going to have. And inside the demo you're watching right now, these are real compositions inside the alloys field called bulk metallic glasses. And they're amorphous materials that we are using to help push nuclear fusion technology closer to commercialization. I had to use this example today. We do a lot of work in hypersonics and developing novel alloys for the hypersonic field. But given how sensitive those materials are, we're using a different example today. And once you actually generate an index in new space, you can actually start to understand the properties that you want to back into. And we have an engine that we built internally called TorchSim, which is open source, that will actually predict all of these properties directly against these structures. But we don't stop there. Once we actually take those set of properties, we start to do what is called inverse design. 
And inverse design in material science is so-called the holy grail of materials discovery. Because what we can do is take an end property and application that we want to go after and inversely design the material from that. And that's exactly what our AI scientists can do today. It suggests real novel compositions directly from those properties so that we can take that composition just like a human scientist would and send it into a lab. The number of times that we do this in a day is four to 500x what a typical scientist will do in a year. And that is the scale up that we think AI and autonomy can bring to materials. But as I mentioned, simulation is only one part of the equation. And every material that we simulate in structure that we make, we actually want to send into our fully robotic lab. Now, I couldn't bring the fully robotic lab here today. We did ask, but they were not a fan of setting up a materials lab in this room. And so instead, I'm actually going to show you some videos of what it looks like to interface with that from the AI agentic side. And so when we generate a bunch of data and we actually run a bunch of experiments, the first thing a scientist will do is index them. I want to know what I made in the lab, and I want to know the corresponding properties that it had, and then I want to be able to stack rank those materials based on the property and the optimization I care about. That's exactly what we can do today because our material labs are not built on human intuition, they're built on autonomy. And so we can actually index an entire space, pull what, like you see on the screen, the hardness data, and then be able to understand what structures actually have the best performance inside that lab. But we don't stop there. Once you actually have these uh, different experiments and elements pulled together, you can actually pull the experimental results. And this is where AI starts to become incredibly impactful. Because not only can we index all of the experiments that we run, but we can start to draw real conclusions or analysis from that experimental process. And this is the intelligence that we are going to bring to scientific discovery. If you look at the example on the screen right now, you see SCM images on the left and hardness images from a micro indent on the right. And the really interesting thing is the spider plot in the middle is AI generated. It is not from a human scientist looking into and deciding what the best materials are, but rather our AI scientist that is telling our research team internally the materials that we should go after. And more importantly, it can then also compare the results of those experiments to every other experiment that we run inside our, our lab today. And by taking this approach, what we truly start to unlock is what we call an active learning approach inside materials discovery. Because we're not just simulating novel materials, we're not even just testing and characterizing novel materials, but we are capturing all of the data in those novel materials. And in the material science field today, there is a huge missing gap inside that data analysis. And we ask why? Well, the reason is because it's incredibly fragmented. Inside discovery today, you have an academic-based discovery is driving our understanding of science, but not much commercialization. And then you have corporate R&D, who's focused on optimizing existing materials to make Wall Street happy. In the middle is this wide open white space to do fundamental discovery entirely tied to a real commercial problem. And that is what we are trying to build today. And what you're able to do if you complete this technology is build a platform, not that you sell, but that you use to go out into other material problems of the future. And so today we are working on materials for hypersonics, materials for nuclear fusion, but the same platform in our AI and our automated lab can be scaled out to virtually any material system in the world. If you have the tooling, if you generate the data sets, and you complete those things inside this active learning flywheel that I just talked about, then you can not only simulate and discover novel materials, but you can actually push those things to the real industries that need these materials. 
And as a company, what we are focused on are not optimization-based problems. They are true enabling-based technologies. These are materials that today will enable the future industries of tomorrow. And when we think about the AI for science race, what we are all here to discuss today, this will be the single most important thing the scientific community starts to adopt. Because if we do not, then our adversaries will beat us to this technology. And when they do, and materials no longer become a burial, barrier to innovation, we will lose the next technological race. And so Radical AI is proud to be leading this wave in the private enterprise, and we are proud to continue to try to partner with those on the government and academic side to take the future of science forward. Thank you all very much.